Thank you. So we're going to move forward to John Klima. Uh, here, I think everyone knows, but you know, online <laughs> uh, viewers probably not. So on his online biography, John uh, is mentioned as a vintage digital artist. And I'm I an old man. <laughs> <laughs> but I sincerely think this is a beautiful, ironic, and brilliant statement. Uh, Klima has uh, been working within the realm of digital media, uh, which in a nutshell could mean a hybrid fusion between the virtual and the real. And I remember seeing in the past an amazing painting projects with robots that you did. Um, that you present here 2017, something like that. Um, and so I'm really, really uh, excited to see the name of the presentation that you're going to proceed now with why uh, I have no interest in digital media experience. <laughs> so, <laughs> so welcome Good. and please. Great. Uh, yeah, so I'm always a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so first I just want to give a brief history of, of my career. Uh, some people are very familiar with it. I used to, I, I say what I, what I used to say that, oh, I used to be famous. Uh, it all starts here. This is the TRS-80 Model 2 computer. Um, Oh, I gotta move. Oops, sorry. Yeah, this, I needed a mouse pad. So uh, this is where, this was our, our storage device. Uh, it was cassette tape. I'm sure plenty of you people know that. Um, uh, but uh, bootlegging uh, uh, was just simply having a tape-to-tape -tape acoustic transfer, <laughs> so that made bootlegging really easy. Uh, and you could do things like, you know, print stuff on the screen, and I believe this is a, a, an image with the original Star Trek game that was, was uh, originally a mainframe game translated to the TRS-80. So I had this when I was a kid. Um, and. Uh, I wrote my first game in 10th grade but f as a project for biology class where it was um, a resource management game to, to uh, control rat population in an urban environment. Uh, and you had poison, you had traps, and you had uh, um, big sticks, baseball bats. Uh, it turned out the most cost-effective way to control rats was with the baseball bat. <laughs> you got to go hunt them down and hit them over the head. Uh, and that was uh, my first time I was accused of plagiarism. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, my teacher uh, didn't believe that I actually wrote it. Uh, and so, well, I tried to convince him. Uh, and so that's where I started. And here is where I am now. Uh, this is uh, where, where both Adriana and I are, uh, me more often. Than, than her because she has to go into Lisbon. Uh, this is what we call the favela real. Sorry about the shot on my Redmi 9, but I, you know, I'm too stupid these days to figure out how to get rid of that stuff and too lazy to crop the image. Uh, I must point out that uh, even though I'm the man here, Adriana did all the stonework. <laughs> and uh, oh, I did put in the hippie hot tub. Uh, uh, so, and this is the new wood house that we're, we're building. It's not quite done yet. And these are Adriana's roses that just went wild this year. Uh, uh, this is a project I did with the Tao Tanaka over the summer. <laughs> this is the geodesic dome. It's made out of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, 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 canes, which there is no shortage of in, on our property. It's kind of more like a geodesic egg because uh, it's you know, string and, and, and canes and very primitive. So this was a summer project with a Tao Tanaka. <laughs> and, and then this is um, uh, where we live right now. This is, uh, there's actually buried underneath all that glass is, uh, is an old um, uh, roulotte or caravan or whatever you want to call it, camper we call them in, in, in the United States. And I got you know, a bunch of solar panels on it. Uh, so we're basically off grid. Um, uh, however, you want to, however you want that to mean. I mean, truly off grid means that you don't even have a bank account. Uh, we uh, generate all our own electricity. Uh, we have a, a nice well, so it's water, and so those are two less bills that I have to pay, which makes me very happy. Um, we do use propane uh, for heating, though I am set up in theory for Armageddon in that 
I do, we do have uh, outside cooking facilities. We have uh, uh, wood, wood burning or cane burning in this case, uh, uh, water heater and, uh, and um, stove water heater and um, an alembic uh, distillery. <laughs> uh, okay, so moving along. You probably know this guy, that's uh, Thomas Edison. And you can probably recognize his face, though many of his pictures are when he was older. And you probably know that guy. Westinghouse. Um, that's the DC AC, AC DC war, current war. And this guy here, that's actually the biggest picture I could find you know, quickly on the web. Uh, I don't like him. <laughs> I like this guy. Even though this guy was a big fat jerk and, uh, uh, and he was actually a much nicer gentleman, uh, he, uh, you probably have heard the history. Um, Westinghouse won because of, of, of distribution and essentially because of, of social behavior. Uh, and AC was more appropriate at the time uh, because it could be centralized and distributed long distances more, much more efficiently than, than direct current. But if you look at everything we do today, laptop, television, it all is being converted into direct current. You know, my laptop is running on direct current, but I got AC transformer. Uh, and so coming back to this, decentralized power, uh, this is one of my biggest frustrations, is that to safely charge my laptop uh, without just jacking it straight into a 12-volt uh, car battery, <laughs> uh, I have to actually convert the DC that I'm, that I'm generating by the sun, storing in a battery, I have to convert that DC into AC through what's called a, a, an inverter, and then I have to convert it back into DC to charge my laptop. This is insane. Uh, and so I have not found uh, a online, or maybe there must be one, uh, any kind of DIY circuit to safely just plug my laptop into my solar uh, uh, array. Uh, and I've tried and I tried and I tried and I just don't seem to be able to find one. I must not have the right search criteria. But, you know, I am an engineer of sorts and, and I, sh I should have been able to find something like that and I can't. And then, oddly enough, I've, I, I also work a lot with metal and, uh, uh, and welding. Uh, and I've had difficulties with that in that it wants DC. <laughs> so I got to go from DC to AC to DC, but a lot of DC through the same kind of inversion and then reinversion. And I, online, you can see some crazy people who make welders out of just a 12 volt battery and two wires. <laughs> But that's not for me, <laughs> right? Uh, um, uh, but it's possible. Uh, uh, and so, again, one of the frustrations is uh, that this guy didn't win. Um, because at this point in time, I think what we really do need is decentralized uh, power sources. OK, for a big city like Lisbon, it's got to be done in a certain way. But for all the little communities like where I live uh, or spend most of my, my time, uh, decentralization is, it would, would, would work really, really well. Uh, where we are are tons and tons of wind generators. So that wind generation doesn't need to go anywhere but where it is. <laughs> it doesn't have to travel. So wind generation, again, is going through the AC lines and then being re reconverted. So all this, through all this conversion, there is loss. Um, OK, so that's, uh, yeah, this, that's just my, my, my current uh, um, political rant. Uh, it starts here, by the way, it ran on DC. <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to move on to where I am today and put it into the context uh, of, of, as much as I can, of, of, the, um, of the conference. So live coding is sort of the beginning of, uh, of, of, of the, the, the conference, with, you know, the first one was all, all about live coding. And I live code every day when I teach my classes. Um, various projects always featuring Adriana Sa. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I don't, I don't uh, teach from videos. Uh, I don't even have a cheat sheet. Sometimes I do 
on the right hand side. I go, okay, what do I want to do today? I think I'm going to show you Craig Reynolds uh, Boyd's flocking algorithm. So let me see, how do we do that? Well, we're going to need some Boyd's <laughs> and we're going to need this. And, and so I actually teach entirely live. Um, and I do, I do this because, uh, and I get lost, I get stumbled. Uh, um, they changed everything in this next version of Unity, and it's, this is deprecated, and that's deprecated, and, and that, and, or it doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, but I do it to actually show the students how I think. And, uh, and again, I just like boxes and spheres and, and, and planes and things like that. So I don't get very deep into the, the, uh, the visual aspect. I get into the behavioral aspect, the logical aspect. Um, uh, so that's, you know, live coding. Um, I was doing, I just want to have another little, little uh, rant, uh, not really a rant, but uh, I was doing the studio uh, with a bunch of friends um, and it was going really well. And then COVID hit. I was actually making a living doing it. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then all the clients went away. Uh, because with no festivals, uh, then nobody needs any demo recordings to send to promoters of the festivals. And so I ended up barely scraping by uh, by doing drum rehearsals. Because in COVID uh, lockdown, if you're a drummer, you can't play at home. <laughs> and so you can, you can go to a studio. So I would not have survived. I sub subsequently gave the studio, handed it over to a younger man uh, who's done a wonderful job. Uh, uh, renovating it and uh, and keeping it alive, um, and so back to social behaviors, mediated social behaviors. I'm going to actually go to my archive. I'm going to start here. Um, well, no, I'm going to start here. Sorry, uh, with this one, 2000, actually written in 1999. Uh, that's a long time ago, and you know that's all the documentation I have of it at this point in time. Uh, um, it doesn't run on this computer anymore. Um, and I gotta dust off one of my old laptops and try to make a video. But I can briefly describe this. Uh, it's a multi-user game uh, at this time in 2000, 1999. Uh, uh, multi-user games were rare. You had to have your own server. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's not like today where you just join World of Warcraft. Um, so I had a server set up at uh, this uh, place called thing.net. I don't know if anybody remembers thing. I think they still exist. Uh, they just let me plug into their line. Um, uh, and people I've known for a long time. And so what, the, what this is, so I had a server. I could host 20, pe 20 people at the same time. Uh, and what it is is a, a ball with a bunch of sticks, uh, bells and hammers, I was calling them. You can spin the whole structure. And when a bell hits a hammer, and you can spin all the little sticks, so you get this kind of like uh, oscillating um, motion, um, uh, combined motion. Uh, when a bell hits a stick, uh, or a stick hits a bell, uh, it plays a sample file. And uh, anybody could upload a sample into any stick at any time, uh, and uh, it would replace what you had on your machine. And if somebody flung a bell or a hammer in Tokyo, I would see it in New York. Uh, so it was 20 people could play with this one single kind of inscrutable object. It's not really a game. Um, and so this was, this was my first you know, foray into creating uh, social media because it's a, or mediated social behaviors. Um, at one point, uh, some, some idiot uploaded the entire second side of Dark Side of the Moon, FTP. It must have taken hours and hours and hours. You know, the idea was, you know, like little teeny samples. Uh, but he uploaded the whole entire um, Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. And, uh, and uh, uh, so how do you mediate that social behavior? I put no controls on it whatsoever. Uh, you could do you could do whatever you want. There wasn't a login. Uh, uh, you could co per 
could have perhaps coordinated a terrorist attack somehow inside <laughs> here because I, I didn't care. Uh, it won an award, uh, Web 3D Roundup, SIGGRAPH 2000, and that's when finally like, I started to get recognized as, as, as a media artist. Um, and, uh, and so that, that's glass bead. Uh, let me go back. And now I'm going to show you, uh, uh, go back one more. I'm going to show you Train. Now, Train, uh, this is a rebuild from 2012. Not really a rebuild, uh, but a reworking with more contemporary equipment. Uh, it's just the best, this is the best video I have of it. So uh, this was in Gimmerange, that's up north if you don't know. Um, what was it, the 2012 European Capital of Culture. And so it's two trains. Originally uh, on the train was a Game Boy. I'll show you those images later. Uh, in this version, I updated to a, um, um, an Android. And the trains drive around and they stop in different places and they're controlled by you calling up the telephone. <laughs> There's a telephone number, you call, you, you get a train. Uh, and uh, the trains go to various places and uh, uh, around the track, and what you have control over is the switching mechanism, uh, and uh, where where the train is, where your train is going to go next. Each one of these little scenes mirrors or mimics or reflects or is pointing at um, a piece of uh, 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 um, uh, is pointing at something that occurred in a film. So I collected a bunch of films, audio from different films, uh, different characters. Um, and then created kind of an AI database, AI uh, database, that depending on, depending on who, where the train went, different people would go on, get on the train, uh, and, or off, and a different conversation f clips from, from dialogue from the films, which I didn't care about copyright, uh, uh, I just stole. <laughs> uh, here's the Game Boy uh, version. Uh, uh, they would have a conversation based on character traits uh, that, uh, that I sort of assigned to each one of these characters. So one of the characters is uh, Nancy Spungen uh, from Sid and Nancy, if you know that film. And this is the little scene of punk rockers. You can get that crazy, you can get scenes, little, little miniature punk rockers in, in, from, from German train companies, uh, uh, model railroads. I've always been interested in model railroads, by the way. Uh, so you know, here's more scenes, more scenes. A bunch of different characters. Uh, a little protest scene here. There's a church scene there. Uh, Brigitte Bardot um, uh, in, uh, uh, as Juliet in, in And God Created Woman. Uh, and a little beach scene there. So this is supposed to be Marseille. I think, there was, I think it was Marseille. Or maybe it was Aix en Provence where, where it happened. Uh, so in terms of uh, this being social behavior, uh, uh, something I saw several times when it was first shown at Postmasters gallery in New York, where are people taking their phones and pointing it at the train, expecting something to happen. Uh, whereas in the original version, it was really a dial-up, um, old-fashioned telephony application, like when you used to call your bank to get your balance or whatever, press star for this, press pound for that, and that was what would do, do the switching. But human behavior is really funny. Uh, and that, you know, that everybody thought it was remote control just like a television. Or not everybody, but many people got that sense that you just point the phone at it. You don't actually listen to the phone and respond. Uh, so I found that fascinating. Um, and let's see, another, another interesting social behavior uh, episode. Uh, and this, was also, this was shown in 2001 at Postmasters in a show called Go Fish. This is, uh, this is more, the, one of my robot drawing pieces. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna get into that. It's fish that I wanna talk about. Um, and so in fish, we've got a, a video game uh, and you play the role of a fish and it's a coin operated, it costs 25 cents to play. Uh, in the center of the gallery are all these, all these aquatic devices uh, all connected. In the center here is a big tank I had made um, that contains uh, two Oscars. Oscars are um, predatory fish. 
They're about that big. Uh, there's a coin op machine. There's a couple of screenshots. So you're, you're the, the little bugger here, and you're trying to get through uh, to the other side, to the safety of the other side of the tank by, while avoiding this guy. That's the Oscar. Uh, so this is the height of my modeling career, modeling and texturing career. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I've never done it better. Again, I, and I probably never will. <laughs> you know? um, but somebody had to do it. Uh, and there's, here again, is uh, the, sort of the overall installation. Um, sadly, uh, I don't think I even have video for this anymore uh, because I just didn't really pay attention. So what happens in the game? You, got two, you have to play in two, two ways. You drop your 25 cents, um, in, uh, and you can play in passive or aggressive mode. In these upper tanks here, uh, let me see if I can go back. Yeah, here. In this, uh, these upper tanks here uh, is a goldfish, uh, a feeder fish, a simple comet, what the Oscar actually prefers to eat for lunch. Uh, and uh, on the outside tank is one of those fancy Chinese goldfish. Um, so if you win the game, uh, a little fish up here gets flushed, you know, flushed like flushing fish down the toilet, into an outer tank, and now it's with its god, right? It, because, you know, the fancy goldfish is compared to just the, the little comet. It's like, oh, wow, that's my god. Um, at this time, also, there was uh, uh, a lot of interest in genetic art, uh, Edward Upcock's uh, radio, radioactive ra uh, rabbit, which may or may not actually be true. Uh, there's, some, so there's some speculation that it wasn't radioactive. Uh, but anyway, it, <laughs> uh, it would get flushed into one tank. So there was this genetic interest in uh, uh, genetic art. And also at the time, you may have re remembered Dr. Kevorkian, who invented a uh, suicide machine, which was basically uh, written, if I understand correctly, in Director, uh, which was a programming popular, sort of easy to do programming language. And it was basically a, an endless series of uh, yes, cancel, yes, cancel, yes, cancel buttons that would then finally give you an injection, uh, uh, a lethal injection. You had lots of opportunities to cancel. <laughs> so, so I was kind of playing with that idea as well. Now, in terms of mediated human behavior, um, there was two ways you could play, passive or aggressive. In passive mode, you always won. Uh, uh, you, you, sa you always saved the life of a goldfish. In aggressive mode, uh, this is when you could potentially feed a goldfish to um, uh, the predator, the Oscar, in the big tank. Um, I had limits on how much the, the uh, how many times aggressive could be played every day, uh, uh, because you can't overfeed uh, the fish. So there were all kinds of balances in place. I still got, you know, when when the press release went out, I still got. I spent hours and hours and hour, hours arguing with PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, and I said this is ethical. Uh, uh, and then uh, because there are limits, and that's the food that this fish prefers to eat. That's what these other fish are actually bred for: is to feed the bigger fish, big fish. Feed. And if you look on a can of fish food, what's in it? Fish. <laughs> and. Uh, and so what it came down to is that their final gripe was, well, no, it's gladiatorial combat. Mm, okay, I can't argue with that. But at the same time of this was uh, one of the very first high school shoot 'em ups in, in uh, Colorado, where some kid went, went ballistic with his dad's AK-47 or whatever and, and, and killed a bunch of people. And when I heard that news report, you know, I think, oh, yeah, it's just like that game Doom. You know, I remember being in high school and all the lockers on each side and these, these long, dismal corridors. And, and then, you know, Doom, one of the first sort of 3D games. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just like Doom. And so everybody was blaming video games on, on that uh, hospital, uh, not hospital, uh, that high school shoot 'em up. Um, so this was also the part of the point. Okay, here's a video game that actually places a, a, a life form at risk. Uh, you, it's, a, it's in a sense a serious game, and that if you want to save the life of a goldfish, you pe you play in passive, but it does cost twenty five cents. Uh, if you want to play the game game and maybe feel the importance of of, of actually trying to save the goldfish, you play in aggressive, and uh, and I got it. I guess I, I did have limits on it. I think four four times a day, 
uh, was the most, four fish, that's the most that would be fed. Uh, and there were two Oscars, so that's two fish a day. Um, and there was a girl, a little girl, uh, or a little girl, I don't know, maybe she was 15, 16, uh, who would come with four quarters every day and play in, in, in aggressive. Um, am I running out of time? Yeah, yeah. a little, yeah. two minutes. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I, I'm pretty much, that's all I really wanted to touch on. Uh, um, yeah, I think that's, that's it, I'm done. Any questions? <laughs> you know, you want to know, you want to know more, it's cityarts.com. That's all me. I have a really good domain name. Uh, got it years ago. I'm just calling a train. Uh, OK, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that piece, I, I hope, is shown. It actually exists in Spain. It's, uh, it was purchased by the, the MIAC uh, yeah, in, in Barajos. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Andre. <laughs> I think that's where we first met, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh. Amazing idea. And uh, I believe that today your teacher doesn't believe also that you are doing yeah, yeah. projects and probably yeah. being the beekeeper also. Yes. Oh, yeah, I wanted to mention that. That's the, yeah, that's the behaviors that I'm really interested in right now. And in a sense, the, the favela real is a completely antisocial interface. <laughs> it's for, for me, me to just, I'm, I'm retired. I mean, I swear to God, I'm, you know, I've helped out with the, with the cables and stuff, but I'm never going to do it again. I'm all, I'll stand and talk, or I'll sit and I'll play my bass guitar, and I'm going to take care of my bees, but I'm officially retired after this. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> just one minute for... Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, sorry, sorry. It was just amazing. Uh, any questions that you want to, or you want to elaborate for later on? Okay, so yeah, thank you, you bet. very much. It was a pleasure, and it's, it was really fun yeah. to, uh, to present again. And now